Hello everyone, welcome back to Team Auto Trend Channel. What do you think about Mahindra? Yes, they are true blue Indian SUV manufacturers. They have a variety of SUVs and variety of products in the Indian market today. But previously, they tried their hand on some more affordable cars such as the Verito, Verito Vibe, the Mahindra KUV 100, which were not that great in terms of success. But now, they have the most powerful SUVs in their respective categories, including the compact SUV category, where they have two products, the Bolero Neo and the XUV 300. This XUV 300 was just recently updated with some minor feature updates. And finally, they also introduced a brand new lower spec entry-level variant. This is the W2 basic variant of the Mahindra XUV 300, which has got an ex showroom price of Rs 7.99 lakh only. Yes, that makes it also the most powerful petrol, turbo petrol compact SUV in the Indian market today, despite of its pricing, which is quite surprising. So yeah, we are here to explore this W2 variant's features in terms of comfort, the features on the inside, the exterior highlights and all the stuff. And we are also going to check whether this is a good value for money base variant in the compact SUV category as well. So yes, today this XUV 300 W2 variant has been provided to us by CAI Auto Industries Private Limited Mahindra Car Showroom in Coimbatore. A hearty thanks to them. Also, a hearty thanks to you, our beloved viewers as well. As usual, I request you to please subscribe to our channel. If you are new to our channel, you may find all cars, all variants, detailed reviews in English on our channel, along with detailed drive reviews and other stuff as well. So, uh, yeah, moreover, you can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter as well for regular updates. Okay, let's now get on with the review, shall we? Yes, folks, truly, this is currently the most affordable Mahindra car you can buy in the Indian market today. Also, this is also the most powerful turbo petrol compact SUV in the Indian market today. That's quite surprising, right? Yes, it is not surprising at all because the XUV 3 Blow has always been the most powerful compact SUV and the engines are still uncompromised even on this base variant. Yes, you don't get a diesel option on this W2 variant. Uh, the turbo diesel engine option is available only from the W4 variant onwards, but this here is the 1.2 litre three cylinder turbocharged petrol engine from Mahindra. This is not the TGDI, but still, it is also the most talkiest non TGDI turbo petrol engine you can find in the compact SUV segment today. This is the 1.2 litre three cylinder engine which produces 110 PS maximum power and 200 Newton meters of maximum torque, which is simply awesome. And in terms of mileage, too, they have not compromised too much. Yes, they claim around 17 km per litre, but still owners are claiming around 18 km per litre, which is quite nice still. And this is also very creamy smooth while also producing great levels of torque from the bottom end itself. So this is truly an engine, which is a gem in the industry today. Okay, let's now check out the exterior highlights. Previously, you may have seen a whole lot of W4 variants on the road. Uh, this W2 reminds us of that older version of the W4. The latest W4 offers you a bit more features, including electric sunroof and roof rails and all, but this W2 does not offer all that. Now, regarding the front, yes, this looks exactly the same as the W4 by not offering any chrome or metal accents on the grille or the lower air dam. However, the surprising bit is that lower down on the front bumper you don't get this scuff plate on the w2 yes this area you can see this is actually a blank area left out on the w2 uh, there you will get a scuff plate on the w4 variant but not on the w2 so that is kind of an obvious cost cutting so yeah you get the same headlamps which are halogen units along with the turn indicators you don't get front fog lamps even on the w8 variant now then coming towards the sides you get to see the uh, 16 inch steel wheels which are exactly the same on the W2 and W4 variants without any wheel covers. Thankfully, they have not compromised on the tyre size which are 205 section tyres in terms of width. It is going to be good because this is a torquey and powerful engine which means you need all the grip you can get. The side profile remains exactly the same as before. This is a Napoli black car which means you will not make out the difference in terms of the door frame applique. Yes, on the W4 and W2 variants, you don't get the masking tape on the B pillar and the door frames, which means if you opt for the white or silver color or any other color, you will clearly see the visible door frame colors, the body color, as opposed to the black color, which is available on the W6 variant onwards. That said, you still get proper body color door handles and ORVMs even on the W2 variant. However, the turn indicators are mounted on the front fender, similar to the W4. As I already said, this W2 does not have roof rails or electric sunroof. Those features are now available on the W4 variant onwards, which is quite surprising. 
okay but still it is good because people are preferring sunroof nowadays then coming towards the rear only the w2 and w4 variants don't have the full led signature tail lamps instead only this c section of the tail lamps get illuminated if you turn on the headlamps or use the brakes only from the w6 variant onwards you get the proper full signature led tail lamps so that is a thing to be noted along with that you don't get rear windshield wiper washer or defogger even on the w6 variant only the w8 variant onwards you get those features along with the reverse parking camera for which the provision is provided in the number plate housing over there you still get two reverse parking sensors available as standard across all variants so that is a plus point however uh, on the w2 and w4 you can clearly see the absence of something over here absence of a rear spoiler to be specific yes uh, this car looks actually pretty rounded and a bit basic from the side profile if you see from a distance the w4 may appear a bit better due to the presence of roof rails but this w2 looks absolutely basic the ground clearance is still good at around 185 mm which is okay for this segment and the wheelbase is also segment besting which means the interior space is going to be fantastic talking about interior let's now get inside next taking a look at the cabin first of all i'll show you the keys of this w2 both the w4 and w2 get the exact same non remote locking keys yes they are flip keys but they don't have remote buttons which means you have got manual central locking only now let's slot this inside and turn the ac on as soon as possible but before that let's take a look at the interior appeal all variants get the same dual tone beige and black color theme and you also get the same uh, good quality fabric upholstery for the seats the seat design remains exactly the same as before which means you get nice and large comfortable seats at the front and that is good the door pads also remain exactly the same as before just like the w4 variant surprisingly even for a base variant you get all four power windows with only the driver window getting one touch down feature and you also get to see electronically adjustable rvms if not foldable they are still adjustable that is a good thing then you have two bottle holders on the front doors and uh, along with that you can see some document holder space as well the build quality is strong solid this is a properly solid built compact suv and it is also the highest rated compact suv in the compact segment category which has been awarded full five star in terms of global and cap safety rating let's now start the car and turn on the ac talking about the ac you get this electronically controlled manual air conditioning available as standard on the w2 w4 and w6 variants only from the w8 variant onwards you get the dual zone automatic climate control ac there is no audio system provided on the w2 and w4 which is quite an acceptable thing yeah this is actually flexible as well because people you can fit whatever size touchscreen system according to your taste aftermarket so that is a good flexible option then you have the difference of this instrument cluster on the w4 diesel variant onwards you get a slightly different instrument cluster with the option of customizable uh, colors for the dials and all but not on the w2 and w4 you instead get a rather decent looking digital instrument cluster like a pizza type instrument cluster console you still get an mid over here which is okay and quite nice and easy to read but it is not as fancy as the higher spec variants but still you get all the information you need including the steering angle you also get the multiple steering modes you also get tire pressure monitoring system yes these are the tire pressure readings and you also have time display illumination control trip meters and distance to empty and all this stuff also providing you gear indicator as well so it is good but it's not too fancy i think it is perfectly okay then yeah you have the multiple steering modes as well yeah you have the regular comfort normal and sport modes for the steering weight which means in the sports mode it is heavy the steering feels absolutely very very heavy uh, which is going to be perfect for long drives and high speed driving and if you are driving in the city then you would like the comfort mode because you can simply use your pinky finger to twirl the steering wheel so easily so this is nice and beautiful okay then uh, then you have other stuff available as standard including the tilt adjustable steering wheel and you also get engine idle start stop feature available as standard across all variants for slightly better efficiency and even though you don't have front fog lamps on the lower spec variants mahindra is kind enough to provide you the switch for front fog lamps using which you can simply connect your fog lamps of the XUV300 even if you fit aftermarket fog lamps making it look like proper factory fit OEM fog lamps so that is quite nice and then you have other stuff uh, which are exactly the same as before the lower spec variants of this car don't provide you center armrest instead you get these 
open cup holder storage console over here which is quite nice and capacious even on the base variant you still get the nicely finished chrome ringed gear lever with proper piano black finish as well quite nice and satisfying to look at then you have rubber padding over here for your phone storage in the center console over here and you have 12 volt charging socket as usual so that's all quite nice and thoughtful then you have the rather deep and capacious glove box available across all variants however only on the top spec variants you get cooled glove box function along with illumination but still you get the large capacity as standard across all variants and you have this tray over here on top which also does not get the rubberized padding which is normally available on the higher spec variants only then coming towards the roof you have the day night adjustable manual arvm available as standard i feel good that they have not compromised on this part but still they have compromised on this thing yes on the w4 variant onwards you get a center console front separate cabin lamp along with a sunglass holder that console is absent on the w2 and along with that you also don't get a vanity mirror in the passenger side sun visor so that is also another feature they have compromised for the w2 exclusively okay apart from that everything remains exactly the same the driver seat does not get height adjustment on the w2 w4 and w6 variants which is quite acceptable in today's age then okay then let's now check out the rear seats talking about the rear seats the mahindra xuv 300 easily provides the most spacious cabin rear seat area in the compact suv category thanks to its abundant wheelbase and great width as well you can easily seat three people abreast in this car in the rear seat which is properly segment besting however in terms of active and passive safety features there are not much on the lower spec variants as you can see uh, right till the w6 variant itself you don't get adjustable headrests still even today and you also don't get three proper three point seat belts which were previously available only on the at least the top spec variants of the xuv 300 but those features were deleted over time so that is a sad thing but still in terms of space and comfort that is no issue at all you get a whole lot of legroom over here whole lot of foot room as well and the dashboard looks like this yes it is a bit old in terms of design but still you get almost all the essential basic features you need for your family right you also get segment besting safety features such as all wheel disc brakes but still they are not providing esp traction control and hill hold on the lower spec variants which are now a common feature even on some basic cars some entry level cars so mahindra needs to work on this they need to provide esp traction control and hill hold assist and six airbags must be available across all variants as well because six airbags are also becoming standard nowadays so this is how the dashboard looks like still this car provides you decent level of safety features such as dual airbags all wheel disc brakes abs with ebd manual central locking pretension and equip seat belts reverse parking sensors tire pressure monitoring system and stuff this is the only car in the category to not provide rear ac vents even on the top spec variant so that also needs to be addressed at least on the facelift version which is going to be launched next year early yeah uh, yeah another small feature which i almost left out the xuv 300 is the only car in this compact suv category to provide height adjustable seat belts for the front passengers even on this base level w2 how cool is that this feature is nowadays uh, addressed as a premium feature on some mid size suvs but the xuv 300 provides this as standard so that is a really appreciable point on the xuv 300's brochure okay then the rear doors as usual provide you large bottle holders you get nice quality materials and a provision for speaker the power window buttons are finished in aluminum look which is quite nice now since the front cabin is not available with a cabin lamp on the w2 you have to use this rear cabin lamp which is a bit further back to reach this is actually easy to reach for the rear seat passengers only but for the front passengers they have to stretch all the way to the back to turn on the lights this is quite inconvenient but still it is okay i think people who buy the w2 can easily opt for the front cabin console with the sunglass holder from the mahindra parts bin okay then let's now check out the luggage capacity now while the mahindra xuv 300 is the widest car in its segment it is still a bit lacking in terms of luggage capacity but if you are not carrying a whole lot of luggage often this car is going to be okay for you because yeah in terms of luggage capacity this is simply not the best in fact it is the least 
luggage capacity in this compact SUV category. The XUV 3W provides you 257 litres of luggage space, which is exactly the same across all variants. However, at least on the top level variants, you get the 60-40 split folding rear seat function that is not available on the lower spec variants. Uh, yeah, it is still all right. You have 100% flat folding mechanism for the rear seats. But if you fold the rear seats like that, you have a whole lot of step over here, right? But you don't need to worry because Mahindra provides you a flexible floor solution. You have this corrugated floor like design, which you can easily remove from here and you can set to the top level rack over here. Yep, simple. And now you get a almost flat loading bay in your Mahindra XUV 3W, good enough for loading large stuff, including some furniture as well. So it is probably okay. Then under this floor, you get to see the spare wheel which is not actually a full-size wheel. It is a 16-inch wheel, all right, but still it is not a, a full-size thick tyre. This instead is a Stepney Space Saver with 135 section tyre with a speed limit of 80 km per hour. And they have specifically mentioned over here, temporary use only. This is a Seat branded Stepney tyre, specifically manufactured for temporary use only with very limited width. You have all the tools and jack placed over here, which is convenient again. All right, so that was all about the luggage capacity. Let's now talk about the pricing and value of this W2 Mahindra XUV 3W. Yes, folks, that was a detailed walk around review of the brand new entry level W2 variant of the Mahindra XUV 3W. Yes, it is the most affordable turbo petrol compact SUV you can buy. And yes, it may appear basic on the inside and out as well. However, at this price point, this car still does not compromise on the basic essential features, overall space and comfort, and on-road performance. It is also the best-built compact SUV to have a full 5-star crash safety rating. So, above all the fancy features, if performance, space and comfort are priorities for you, and you would like to customize and modify your car according to your taste, then this Mahindra XUV 3W W2 could be a perfect choice for you. Do let me know in the comment section below what do you think about this base variant of the Mahindra XUV 3W. Meanwhile, this is Viprajesh signing off. See you on another video. Thank you for watching.